Take it from me, it's not very easy to become an excellent coder. Anybody can just go on LeetCode and see the solution, type it out, submit, and they say that they are an excellent coder. But it's not that easy. But once you get the hang of it and you understand the thing properly, then it's very easy and very rewarding. You just need to break the ice. And as I care for your time, I will list all the steps up front here. Here's the list as you can see on the screen. Hello everyone, I'm Srimanti and I'm currently working as an ML engineer. I recently graduated from IG Delhi with a BTEC in computer science. I'm very passionate about coding and machine learning, but it was always not the case. I remember when I was in my first year of college, many of my friends already knew coding really well, but I was just starting out and it was a nightmare. At first, I didn't even understand what DP was, um, dynamic programming was, and I, I was really stressed out in my first year. It actually took quite a bit of struggle to get to the position where I'm at currently. And therefore, I want to help you out so that you don't have to face the same thing. Okay, so let's go over the steps one by one. First thing is understand the theory. There are hardly seven to eight topics that are important in DSA, in coding, um, and that they are asked in companies, interviews, and placements, and also in college exams. Seven to eight max topics. These are, as listed on the screen, binary search, greedy, dynamic programming, trees, graphs, divide and conquer. Yeah, so go to cpalgorithms.com, the well-known site that has all the algorithms implementations in C++, Python, and so on. Or you can go to 3blue1brown, which is an excellent YouTube channel for visualizing DP and some other algorithms, and try to get a hang of all these topics. But I would say approach these topics one by one. So, okay. So the next thing that comes is go to Geeks for Geeks and solve 20 to 30 problems on each topic. Start with the easy ones, then go to medium and then hard. Here, you approach that based on the topic. So basically on GFG or Geeks for Geeks, you go there and you type in dynamic programming and solve the first 20 to 30 problems that you see and do this for each topic. Now that this step is done, and now you have an average idea of what are the kind of questions that are asked based on the topic, now it's time to spice things up a bit. So go on LeetCode and hide the topic there and just start solving problems randomly. It will be difficult at first, but give it around 45 minutes to a problem that is actually quite a pretty common number I've heard among many sites like code forces and all. I've seen people give 45 to 60 minutes on trying to solve a problem. And if you're still not able to get it, try to see if it's a hard problem. So if it's a hard problem, then give around 1.5 to two hours. If it's an easy one, max 45 minutes. So once you have got um, given enough time, and you still aren't able to solve, then you can see the hints. Often many problems on lead code, they have hints, hint one, hint two. Try to get the hint and again, give the same amount of time after that to solve it. Do not try to look at the solution soon because it will not help you at all. You need to be able to solve the questions on your own. So it's very important to not see the solutions. And if you are unable to think of any solution, any approach, but you know that you will be able to solve it, then leave the problem that day and again, attempt it the next day. If you do that, you might be able to solve it with a fresh mind and a fresh perspective the next day. And the learning that happens here can do wonders. You don't need to solve 500,000 problems on lead code. You just need to solve enough problems so that you have an average idea of what to expect from a problem, how to approach it, how to write the pseudocode, and then finally code up the final solution. It doesn't matter the language, either C++ or Python, anything is fine. Okay, so now that this is done, try to solve around 200 to 300 problems on lead code, the way I mentioned. Now comes the next step. Go to codeforces.com, which is an excellent site for problems that often appears in harder 
interviews and in harder uh, online assessments. So Codeforces is a favorite site for many competitive coders. You might think that lead code is enough for interviews. Why do I need competitive coding? Well, it is to differentiate you from the crowd. You need to be able to solve competitive coding problems if you really want that high paying job. Because believe me or not, any high paying job will have pretty difficult interview problems and pretty difficult online assessment problems as well. So go to Codeforces and start solving problems there. The problem set, as you can see here, there are many problems here. Just scroll down and then solve randomly. You can set the rating as um, less than 1600 when you are starting out. And then later on, slowly, slowly, you can increase the rating there. Now that you have solved around 50 to 100 problems on code forces, now you're ready for the next step, which is contest, which is very, very important. So giving time bound contests is extremely important as it's an indicator of whether you are able to think under pressure or not. Go on lead code, give lead code contests. Go on code forces and give code forces contests as many as you can. Then you'll have an average idea of how you are going to perform on interviews or on online assessments where there's a timer and you have to answer the questions under quite a lot of pressure. This will increase your confidence so much that you will become undefeatable and you will be able to get any job you want. So this channel is basically for mastering machine learning, but often in any machine learning jobs, if you're starting out, they will ask you coding questions as well. Maybe not very hard coding problems, but definitely intermediate level, they will ask you. So it's important to prepare coding questions as well. Once you're done with this, then you know that you have enough knowledge to crack any problem and you can get any job you want in software at least. But if you want an ML job, you still need to study ML. Um, yeah. So I think you're confident enough after this, if you want to do all these steps. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I had for today. See you next time and till then have a great day.